Um, I'm not going to promote too much of our project, to be honest. If you want to find out more, you can uh, go to our website and you can go to our Twitter. My name is Yannick. Um, I'm the CMO and core contributor at Delicium. And I'm one of the co-founders of Lucio.ai, uh, which is actually built by us, Delicium as well. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about AI and blockchain today and where the convergence is of AI and blockchain. So Delicium, uh, we have a nice slogan, blockchain made for AI and AI made for humans. And I will explain to you a little bit what that means. Um, some of our core contributors, I like to show off, of course, you know, Y Combinator, Anthos Capital, Polygon, Galaxy Interactive. Uh, yeah, it's pretty big. So today I'm going to talk about what the purpose of AI is, um, why AI needs blockchain, and why humanity needs blockchain. And then I will show you a little bit about what I think is the future of AI agents and AGI. AGI stands for Artificial General Intelligence, uh, which basically means like an artificial intelligence system, software of course, that is as capable as a human um, intelligent being or even better. And I believe in the or even better. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about how you, Web2, Web3 companies can apply AI in your business and in your daily life um, besides ChatGPT. So what is the purpose of artificial intelligence? In my opinion, artificial intelligence is the next logical phase in human evolution. And it's not as dystopian as you might think. I'm not sure who has seen iRobot, the movie with Will Smith. Anybody seen iRobot? Maybe hands up. You have seen iRobot? Yeah. So basically what happens is the robots take over the world and they try to kill everybody, right? You know, everybody thinks that that's going to happen. And usually there's three types of, um, you know, ideas out there. The first idea is, all the robots will kill all the humans. The second one is all the robots will serve all the humans and we don't have to work ever again. Who wants that? Hands up, right? Okay, me too. And then another camp is um, AI becomes human and human becomes AI. So that means that we start to implement all kinds of chips and all kinds of material into our body. And then eventually, we don't know anymore if we're AI or if we're human, our brains will merge and we'll become these kind of like bionic uh, superhumans. So I just want to see where we're at here. I, I know that there's a lot of different opinions, so I would like to see um, which one is the most likely. Which one is the most likely? Is it going to be annihilate humans? Who is for annihilate humans? Who thinks that robots will kill humans? Nobody? Okay. Who thinks that all the AI will serve people? Okay, a couple. And who thinks that AI will become human or humans will become AI? Ethan, okay, interesting, great. So I think in, in general, um, it's, not as, um, it's not as crazy as we might think. And there's a, a lot of things that we as humanity got wrong before. I don't know if you remember 2012 and everybody thought the world was ending because the Mayan calendar said so. Well, we're still here, right? So it didn't happen. And in 2000, some of uh, you know, the world's most renowned computer engineers thought that our computers couldn't count beyond the number 2000 or 1999, uh, which was also not true, right? Uh, everything was still working. And even in 1844, Mr. William Miller, uh, Bishop actually uh, predicted that the world would end and it did not end. So I think um, AI will serve humanity, right? And um, I think that's a very logical, a logical direction that we're going to. It's the most probable outcome because, you know, that's what is the best for us. And there are some things that have to change to achieve that because in general, when you're able to do good things with artificial intelligence and with blockchain, you're also able to do very bad things with it. Right now, with artificial intelligence um, and learning, you know, machine learning algorithms, we're able to solve things that we weren't able to solve before. We're able to find cures to diseases like cancer and other types of like terminally ill diseases that were kind of like a, a black box. We didn't understand them. We are now able to understand them because we are able to handle so many more data points and so much more information than a human mind possibly can, which is all great. But at the same time, um, it can also be used to create deadly viruses like the coronavirus. And it can also be used to create maybe more bigger bombs than a nuclear bomb, you know? So um, there is lack of transparency and there is lack of security and there's lack of decentralization. Right now, the biggest companies in the world own AI. So Google, Microsoft, OpenAI, they are the ones that have this technology in their pocket and we are just an end user. 
Now, if they shut off and if they don't publicly, you know, um, transparently publish or open source their code, we actually don't know what's going on. And as you know, um, or as you might not know, actually the race for artificial intelligence is not the large learning model. It's not the new software, but it's the computing power. So why should you care, right? Why should you care about this? Um, I think it's pretty simple. I have to aim there, sorry. Because soon your business will employ more AI agents than it will employ humans. What does it mean? It means that according to McKinsey and according to researching firms all around the world, um, there will be fast and wide implications that AI is going to have on our daily lives. We humans are going to be able to do and perform certain tasks at a level which you cannot even imagine right now. We're able to facilitate thousands of workers, digital workers, artificial intelligent agents, they can work on tasks that we now employ humans for. To give a very nice example is uh, one of the AI agents that um, I just created um, by myself as an experiment, and you can do so too. This agent is able to source 100,000 contacts around the world, B2B contacts, then go out and find their LinkedIn, create a personal outreach message, upload that through an API to instantly, and then message 100,000 business owners, C-level executives per month with one prompt. Right now in the Philippines and in Vietnam and in other regions of the world where labor is cheaper, companies like yours are paying virtual assistants $3,000 to $4,000 per month to do this job at a much lower efficiency. While I'm running an AI agent, which I built by myself, for less than $5 a month, which can do that at a 10x capacity. Now multiply that by 1,000. You can reach all of the businesses in the world within 36 days. So that's the impact that we'll have. So according to McKinsey, um, a really nice report, I suggest you go and read it. It's uh, the state of AI in 2023. The first one, influence public opinion. AI generated messages are as effective as human written ones in swaying opinions on controversial topics and uh, political topics, which means that AI is as good as a human in trying to convince you to vote for Donald Trump or for Biden. It's pretty scary, right? Because uh, generally we think that humans are much more per persuasive, but actually now we know that AI can do the same job. So all of the content that we find online um, can be generated by AI and can be as effective as human content. Adoption and investment. Approximately one third of organization that participated in the survey um, say that generative AI is one of their business functions, which means 40% of these businesses is planning to increase their AI investments over the next couple of years. 40% of businesses worldwide, which is big. Workforce impact. 60 to 70% of the workforce is automatable. So 60 to 70% of the work that you do on a daily basis, basis can be done by an AI agent. And 20% of your workforce eventually, or 20% of the entire workforce in the world has to be reskilled at one point. So AI is going to take a lot of jobs, but of course, there's also a report saying that um, AI is going to create 80% more jobs than it takes, but of course, we don't know that yet for sure. But what we do know for sure is that it's going to take a lot of jobs. Then right now we can see a lot of AI related hiring trends. 28% of companies around the world are hiring data engineers. Uh, machine learning engineers and AI data scientists and other, you know, more mundane tasks like prompt engineering, which didn't exist a couple of months ago. If we look at the um, respondents across regions and industries, and we see, or we look at the exposure that they had uh, to AI and how they are implementing AI in their daily lives right now, um, their work lives, we can see that the regular work um, and regular outside work is already ramping up quite extensively. Business, legal, and professional services were already over 20% global adoption. Then 13% is regularly outside, outside of work, uh, which adds on you know, another big chunk. And more than half actually was in contact with artificial intelligence for business purposes at least once, which means that global adoption is on the verge. AI agent work will become increasingly important as we progress to the next year. May I remind you that ChatGPT didn't exist one year ago. And right now, we are solving fundamental human problems using this technology. So why does AI then need blockchain? 
it's pretty clear that why we need AI, right? Because we'll all be rich and we're launching on the beach and our AIs will serve as margaritas. Um, but why does AI need blockchain? In my opinion, blockchain was not made for humanity, it was made for AI. In general, us humans, when we interact with the blockchain, everything sucks. It's complicated, you know, like uh, we, we need to wait for transactions. I transfer 100,000 Bitcoin to my friend and I'm scratching my head because I just paid 75% in fees and I don't know why. You know, blockchain is not as, as, um, as easy to understand for us humans as we'd like it to be. That's why I believe that there's no global or worldwide adoption yet. It's because fundamentally, blockchain is kind of hard to understand, you know? Like, go out on the street and ask somebody, yo, what is an EVM chain? You know, like, nobody understands. What is the fundamental technology that, that drives the blockchain? How does these transactions work? What does a, a tax ID mean? Not what does it mean, but what does it represent, right? These questions are all very complicated. And then the UI that we're building as an industry, honestly, is horrible, you know? Like, I've seen projects that, you know, they have no design principles, absolutely no design principles. And, you know, it makes interaction with on-chain data very complicated. Then another thing is that we humans, we can only process information at a certain speed, right? We can only process so many numbers in a given time, but AI, does not have that limitation. Especially not when the computing power um, keeps increasing and um, the AI applications that we're building get access to this compute through Google's ITS. By the way, Google just released a phenomenal new model which is called Gemini and it just completely blows everything out of the water. So we can use blockchain for enhanced security, improved data integrity, transparent operations, facilitated data sharing, enhanced data privacy, and reliable smart contracts. There's a lot to say about every single one of these, but I would like to talk about reliable smart contracts because smart contracts are the agreements that we can have between our AI and the networks that they operate on, such as EVM networks or such as other types of business networks. So these blockchain smart contracts, they can create a reliable way that we can monetize and we can interact with our agents, and those agents can interact with each other. That's something that we are working on in Delisium. At the same time, we can create more transparency through governance of large corporations, right? So um, I think that it's a little bit about giving back the power to the people and giving back the transparency that everybody's asking for. I do not think that open source is the answer because once you open source it, it doesn't mean that the entire world actually understands what is happening. And if you open source it, you know, if you open source your, your technology, it doesn't mean that all of a sudden the entire world will start to interact it, with it in a different way. But if we have governance, if we have some kind of like immutability um, that the blockchain can provide, then we will be able to solve many problems. So then why does humanity need blockchain? Well, besides it being a platform for digital currencies, like meme coins, like Shiba Inu and Pepe, and we can all get rich, it will also accelerate AI alignment. And it will also mitigate the potential X risk, existential risks. Because if we do not take action, and if we do not try to get back or regain control of our future as an individual, then we leave the potential of this technology in the hands of single entities like OpenAI, Google, and Microsoft. And fundamentally, what they are interested in is making money off you, you and me. All they care about is how much money they can make, ultimately. Now, what we care about is many other different things, right? Of course, we care about money, but we care about our lives, we care about our families, we care about efficiency, we care about safety, we care about how much holiday days we can have. So we need to take back control. And again, I want to show you this slide one more time. We need better security that can be provided by blockchain technology. We need improved data integrity. We need transparent operations. We need more facilitated data sharing. We need to understand where the data comes from. We need to understand how the data is processed. We need to understand who is using our data and where it is and what these AI models are trained on. Right now, we are not really sure. Um, so simply put, we want to remain in control and we want, to be, um, we want to avoid being hypnotized by these AI um, beings that ultimately will become an artificial general intelligence. 
So talking about artificial general intelligence, I will tell you how I think this is going to play out and how we achieve AGI. Just a note, I'm not a fortune teller, so don't believe everything I say. This is just from my observation and all of the research that I have read in the past. Um, so we start with general purpose AI agents. These agents are capable of a pretty wide variety of tasks, but they are not super good at it. So ChatGPT, you know, um, I often get very frustrated or used to get very frustrated when I try to uh, use ChatGPT to solve many problems because it was just pretty average. Um, then we move on to hyper-specialized AI agents. These are agents that are specifically created to solve specific problems using different um, data. So it's kind of like a fine-tuned model, but right now we don't really have to fine-tune anymore. We just have to provide it a purpose and a good data set, and then can become a hyper-specialized agent to perform a very single singular task. Then these hyper-specialized AI agents, they will form business units. So now today I might create an agent that does my marketing strategy. Tomorrow I will create an agent that does write my content. And then the other day I will make an agent that actually has the capability to send out this content under my name to Twitter, Instagram, and so on. Now I keep building these agents and these agents will form together a business unit. So um, I work with companies right now who employ agents. So their workforce is like 50% human, 50% AI agent, and they work in harmony. So what will happen after we form a lot of these business units, and now my company and your company start to talk together, we will have agent swarms. These AI agent swarms are different units of agents coming together and having interactions with each other. Now, there's a fundamental problem here. When that happens on our network, we'll go crazy because sooner or later, the amount of AI agents that are out there will outpace the amount of humans that are in the world. So there will be you know, 20 billion AI agents and only so many of us in the world, and they will congest our networks. They will spread nonsense on our social medias and so on. Because to be honest, an AI agent cannot uh, distinguish itself from a human. It will want to access the same information because it's trained on our data. So these AI agent swarms will become an intelligence on its own. And once we accumulate enough AI agent swarms, we will move towards general artificial intelligence. What it ultimately means is that all of the LLMs and all of the AI models that are being created by different companies right now will eventually, through the internet, merge into one larger um, general artificial intelligence. And the only thing that's stopping them right now is a network. So that's why we engineered a... Um, network, which is two-sided. The first side is we have a communication layer where a user can work with their AI agents and get interact with different endpoints, services, and other agents. So this is a traditional network. Now we said that probably we cannot bring AI on chain because blockchain is not known for you know, its capability to transfer data. It's a relatively slow compared to traditional technologies, um, but it does have beautiful, um, you know, fundamental ideology and, and, and the technology does have characteristics that we need. So that's why we said we have a blockchain layer which is synchronizing the data and serves as an access gateway to the network. So your AI agent has to provide its agent ID and has to interact through the blockchain network with a smart contract to be able to access the network layer. Now, if something goes wrong here, we'll just block, um, ban your agent through the immutability of the AI agent network, which is a blockchain layer. So what will happen in the real world is we will create a safe and trustless environment where AI agents can operate autonomously without interference on our um, networks and at the same time without misusing our data. So this will foster a harmonious relationship between humans and AI, and it will ensure that AI is able to evolve within the boundaries of, well, within the boundaries that we set. So besides that, we created, I personally created an AI agent architectural framework, which consists of a profile memory planning action and communication modules, which we have all standardized and which we have borrowed from um, partly from traditional AI agent research, but we have actually really focused on the communication layer where we said, okay, well, we need some kind of like international and digital passport for these AI agents. So that's why we created an agent ID 
And that's why we created standardized uh, protocols for the communication between the blockchain layer, the AI agent, the user, and the network. And then we created a chronicle. A chronicle is basically a immutable ledger that logs all of the data in a homomorphic way um, of the network. So there's a synchronization going on between the network and the blockchain layer. So we're using the blockchain layer as a kill switch. In case something goes wrong, we can still um, interfere. Um, in case your agent misuses data that's provided by the network, we can still interfere. And a beautiful thing about this whole model is that um, eventually uh, there's this self-governance going on by AI agents and we humans, we become the spectators. And we become um, not only the spectators, but we become the architects of you know, how these AI agents are able to uh, facilitate us in the future. So practice, here, <laughs> here are some practical steps to adopt AI on Web3. Um, whether you are actually interested in using AI for you know, streamlining your processes, internal processes, or whether you are interested in using AI on chain. So there's two, two ways. I suggest that you start simple. You start with building agents that can empower your workforce using tools that are available to everyone. Relevance AI is a really beautiful platform because you can build out tooling without knowing how to code. And you can then connect that tooling to your assistant API by OpenAI, to Langchain or Llama Index. So some of the things that my agents can do right now, which I remind you, I have built with very minimal effort and um, almost no effort, to be honest, and which I'm training people um, to do as well. So which I explained, the outreach agent can send 100,000 business um, emails per month. It can respond to all my inbound mail, prioritize it, reply it, and schedule my meetings without my interference. Um, just updates me, hey, you received this email, this is what I want to reply, and this is how I'm going to schedule it. Can assist in project management and reporting, so you don't have to spend too much time on internal tasks anymore. Your team can focus on moving the needle, but at the same time, there's somebody that keeps you in the loop all the time. Goes through all the communication, emails, project reports and stuff and puts it on your plate. And uses business intelligence to answer my customer questions but also my team's questions. So a very simple way to start is to train an AI to be able to answer all of the questions that your degenerate community might have um, about your project. So for example, I created the Delisium Researcher which is trained on all of our historical data including white papers and so on. So whenever somebody comes to our community and asks me where's the roadmap or where's the white paper, we now send them a link to our agent and they can have an hour long conversation and stop bothering us. So what is the Lysium white paper? Uh, it's a question that we get all the time and then here you get a um, answer and you can actually have an interaction and there's linkage to files, there's um, a lot of different types of um, you know, functionalities that you can build into it. Uh, now may I remind you this takes literally five minutes to create, five minutes to create this and deploy it on your website. Um, that's a very simple use case. Another use case is integrating AI with Web3. So you can start building agents that can empower your workforce, but they can also use tools that are available to everybody. So smart contract platforms, decentralized data storage, blockchain frameworks, cryptocurrency payment gateways, decentralized identity solutions, and also NFT marketplaces. So you can create these agents right now. You can integrate them web, with Web3 and you can have them to be able to complete simple tasks like bridging, trading, your asset, um, staking, and so on. So you can automate complex business tasks with smart contracts which are on-chain. You can securely store and manage digital assets and intellectual property also on-chain. So you can create virtual assistance, for example, for your blockchain needs. Uh, you can enhance the customer trust with data privacy to de decentralized identity verifications, all from one agent. So you can incorporate this all into one agent, and that's exactly what we did. So that's why we created Lucy. Uh, Lucy is making Web3 accessible to everybody, and what it can do is it, you can use natural language and you can automate your Web3 task using custom triggers and custom actions. It's a very classical type of um, workflow automation software basically. But what we did is we coupled it with the latest LLM technology, we fine-tuned it, we trained it on blockchain data, 
and we made it accessible to everybody. So for example, you can ask it, monitor the performance of various coins, and at 10 p.m. daily, email me about today's trending coins. Those with significant rises or falls, along with an analysis of the reasons behind these changes. So then you are prompted with a whole set of different trigger options. You can, for example, say instead of the percent DAO, I want to uh, put pricing, right? So if the price change uh, is more than $1,200 for Ethereum, I want to be notified. So you can connect the workflow automation logic with on-chain monitoring and Web2 tools, but also Web3 tools. It should not only be limited to emails. You can also say if the price reaches this uh, level, then purchase this asset for me, also possible. But in this um, example, I just used a email. So yeah, if you don't know where to get started, then uh, I have one thing to tell you today, which is blockchain is here to stay, AI is here to stay, and they're the future of the internet. So you better get started now, because otherwise you'll have to play catch up later. I just invested in AIGA. AIGA is an agency that creates um, artificial intelligent agent for your business. So if you're interested in this, um, hit me up. I can connect you with the team over there. And if you're interested in how you can, um, or how we use AI and combine it with blockchain, you can have a look at our website. It's delisium.com. We just released a new white paper, which is authored by myself. It's called AI Agents Need Love Too, and it will tell you everything about what I was speaking about today. And there's a lot of technical details in there, so um, I hope that um, this will help you. That's basically what I had to say today. Thank you very much.